Hello guys and welcome to a new Steel Division video today by me Vulcan. Today I have for you a 2 vs 2 on St. Mary Glees and in this one I'm going to be playing the 101st Airborne. I'm playing with Val, he's going to be using the 3rd Canadian Infantry and this was a ranked game, a 2 vs 2 ranked game. We're playing against Doberman and Kirk Lazarus and what was interesting was I've started to notice something going into ranked. I love 2v2 ranked. I think it's really good. I think it's like the best game mode in this game. Like 2v2 works really well for competitive play because it allows you to use a lot more than just like the standard strong 1v1 divisions. Obviously I'm using the 101st and my opponent's using the 3rd Volschmager, which kind of nullifies my point a little. But I, I strongly believe that like 2 versus 2 makes a lot of the divisions a lot more viable than they were before. And like in 1v1, for example, you have to get those like strong all-round decks or divisions and therefore you're you're limited to those rather than being able to play, for example, Panzer which is incredibly specialized into heavy armor late game and also like a strong like motorized armor push early game. You know, those things are hard to work around if you're just playing in a 1v1. Whereas in a 2v2, the other player can support you if you maybe lose too many units or or your strategy doesn't quite go to plan for example so i think in 2v2 you know it's, it's also a lot more comfortable in general like there's a lot less pressure because you have like somebody else to rely on but aside from that it's just like really i think brings more diversity to the game anyway that wasn't why i wanted to make this video uh, the main reason i wanted to make this video was because in the ranked queue at the moment, they have the option for you, even as a single player, to queue for 1v1, 2v2, 3v3, or 4v4. Um, they added that for quick play, and I think it's fine in quick play, because as a single player, you want to be able to find like all sizes of games, right? But when you're playing ranked, and for example, myself and Val queue for 2v2 exclusively. If you're like a single player and you're queuing for 1v1, 2v2, 3v3, 4v4, you could get matched with a completely random player and then get put into a 2v2 ranked game against two people who are blatantly on comms, right? And in my opinion, that just shouldn't happen. It just straight up shouldn't happen. But either way, um, that's kind of what happens in this game, I believe. I'm not entirely sure if my opponents in this one were you know, on comms or were playing together, but by the way it worked out, I don't think they were. And I think that's a, a big detriment to the game currently. And I think there's a there's a lot of things that, that need to be changed in Steel Division still to make it uh, more appealing to new p players. But this is just this is just one of them. I, I don't think you can have a rank system that's this unbalanced because Otherwise, it kind of makes us winning this game feel a little pointless, you know? If there's, like, not as much of a challenge as there should be, and, you know, like, people can call this, like, an easy win because it's, like, two people on comms versus two people, you know, separate, it kind of, yeah, just nullifies your victory and, and makes it kind of pointless. Either way, 56% territory lead from the start. Um... We're going to be seeing Val pushing up on this left side, and our opponent invested in a Firefly. So, 12th SS Panzer player is investing in a Firefly there. It's going to be coming down the road, completely neglected his left flank. So Val's just going to be able to push all the way through here uh, with the AT gun, and we're already out of the plus two very early on. And the main reason I brought you this game was mainly to just discuss that thing to do with ranked more than anything, but there is some interesting gameplay on this right side, especially as I bump heads with the uh, third Volschmager player. Because I'm going to be taking half the town with Val, we're going to be seeing my engineers and Val's stormtroopers taking on the uh, 12th SS pa Panzer player in the center. I've got some engineers here, going to be getting them into the building. Get those flames on target, should be able to uh, destroy enemy uh, half-tracks and stuff, or at least make them surrender. Took out one of the command units there with the uh, 50 cal. We're going to see a Storch come over. I'm not entirely sure why. Either way, on the right side, things are a little more exciting. We're going to be seeing some sharpshoots uh, being used, and since these guys have had their ammo lo loadout sorted out, I think they're actually really effective. So here we can see them engaging my 50 cal. 
going to see my M3 gun. Uh, no veteran CAT gun. Going for the kill onto the L6 and crew knocked out. Okay, he's got he's got nine seconds on target. That's probably about two shots. Weapon damage, lovely. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'll take that. You know, he's not going to actually penetrate. I'm I'm perfectly fine with that. But then the third shot, wow. Okay, gets the kill. I'm like, well, that's fine by me. Either way, caution shaft shoots are going to be taken out there by the airborne rifles as they get a little bit too close. 50 count is pinned down currently, but Pathfinder's engaging the caution mirror getting the open. In the centre of the town, what ended up actually happening here was, uh, although our airborne engineers and stormtroopers did the job, what would have been really nice is to have had a airborne rifles in the town as well, because we really lacked a bazooka to like take out the Panzer II, for example, and any other armoured vehicles that are there, but we fortunately made the rest of them surrender. I'm going to be getting this airborne engineers into the forest just so that that can, you know, defend there much easier. Airborne engineers work so well in forests. Uh, 50 cows going to be opening up from the top of the church onto the 223. Over on the right side, well, mortars coming in from the opponents onto my 50 cow. I've brought up my own mortars now. And we're going to be seeing a, a little bit of an interesting play here. So, Pathfinders can see that there's pretty much nothing here, so I don't have to worry about that. M3 gun's being pinned down by the MG34, that's fine. M M3 gun is also sitting in this tree line. But yeah, in general, this is the main engagement here. I've got to kind of ignore the plus two throughout the game because that was just kind of disappointing. Uh, they just didn't do anything to try and recover this. You know, Val has three units here, two stormtroopers and a six pounder. Uh, for, for whatever reason, they didn't decide to put just one panzer grenadier squad here or something. Just try and hold that back, but and then try and make a push back. But at the moment, it's boy to firefly, not really doing too much. Six pounder engaging that. Just keep on looking at the right side. So Morse is going to be opening up here with their HE shells and one's going to be using smoke shells. So we've got smoke shell going up the road. That's to block off the line of sight of the L6. We've got HE shells landing on the opposing artillery, the counter battery. And what's happening here is we've got these airborne rifles have been pinned down. We've got another airborne rifle squad coming up. Pathfinders are going to again be line of sight blocked by the smoke for that L6. And the 50 cal is obviously still pinned down in the ruins there. So I'm going to be bringing up some more infantry. These are going to be airborne engineers. Flamethrower squad tries and makes it across the open. Gets mown down by the airborne rifles. You can see the smoke. They're walking through it with the falchion mehigas. And... Uh, being pinned down. So Mortar's doing a good job here pinning down the Volsham Eagles and we're able to push them back. But then what I'm going to do is drop off my unit of airborne engineers here and a unit of airborne rifles on the right side. I'm going to be starting to push through the orchard myself. So the opponent's come up here with his L6. He's, he's pushing through the smoke. Oh, that's exactly the right thing to do in this situation because the only reason I would have done that, smoked him off for example, is if I didn't have anything to deal with him. But fortunately I do have the uh, M3 gun here which is able to get into line of sight and one shot one kill M3 gun does the job so that was nice force him to come close get the M3 gun on target and it does the job exactly as planned he's going to get pinned down and killed off by the Volkswagen very quickly but it's already done its job so that's a 40.8 AT gun killing off an L6 I want to get my airborne engineers into this compound so I'm going to be smoking off them as they run forwards I'm trying to get that napalm on target I'm trying also not to you know block this line of sight here so the Fulcher Megas continue to fire at the airborne rifles now in order to assist this push I'm going to need a command unit should have ideally moved forwards the airborne leaders before I move forwards the airborne engineers but instead I decided to bring up an M22 Locus so what's going to happen is the airborne engineers are going to engage one of the Fulcher Jaegers, fair enough, burn them to death. Then I'm going to be focusing on the other Fulcher Jaegers, but the Fulcher Jaegers are actually going to do a lot of damage to my airborne engineers and the third squad comes in and forces my airborne engineers to surrender. Now that wouldn't have happened had the M22 been in position before I made that push, so that was a little bit of a mistake on my part. Now off map artillery, they use barrage to take out my mortars. I'm going to be forced to bring in a replacement. 
wasn't too concerned about that. We still have a lot of infantry here. A lot of airborne rifles. These Falsch Jägers caught out on the road. They're going to get pinned down and killed off very quickly by the airborne rifles at this range. You're going to see the uh, Falsch Jägers there being engaged at max range as well. So I think the airborne engineers did a lot of damage to those squads and that made it a lot easier for my airborne rifles to get on target, which was nice. But still, you know, not in the best position. M3 guns being pinned down here by enemy mortar. The opponent is going to be bringing up some Flammenwerf squads. I'm actually bringing up my airborne engineers. Just some more of them, because when my mortar gets here, I can smoke again and continue to run forwards. Now I'm going to be hit by the Sharpshooter. My opponent using now two more squads of these, and I'm going to be forced to continuously fall back. Put another Pathfinder squad here. That's going to be uh, pushing up with my other airborne rifles. Just make sure that I continuously have the recon. In the town, airborne engineers trying to hold strong. Now being hit uh, by multiple units here. Should have had them on the return fire ideally so they didn't use these rifles and reveal themselves whilst trying to shoot this Panzergrenfuhrer. That was uh, again a, a little mistake there as well. So here comes the mortar. It's going to be smoking off my uh, locust there briefly. But now what I'm going to be doing is just smoking off the line of sight from the sharpshooter on the left side. That's going to allow my airborne rifles to move forwards and hopefully get in these buildings. So that's what I'm going for at the moment. Just got to make sure that I smoke this off properly on the left side so that they can continue forwards. And again, you can see there, Sharpshoots are shooting through the smoke. Not ideal, but I'm just going to fill that out to make sure it doesn't happen again. Panzergrenfuhrer get burned alive in the trees here, but airborne engineers aren't going to end up going down. Bring up some reinforcing infantry to the centre alongside an M22 Locust. Managed to get those airborne, airborne engineers forwards and kill off a Falschmjäger, which was good. Off map artillery coming in onto this location, but not too bad. All of my units have pretty much moved forwards, except from these airborne uh, leaders and uh, the airborne rifles there. And the airborne rifles do go down. These airborne engineers not going to fall back because of the, or not going to surrender because of the M22. That was quite nice. But they are going to be trying to charge me with Volkswagen after that, so I'm going to have to fall back the M22. ME109 coming in to strafe my airborne rifles, and this was just like a continued, uh, quite nice engagement actually throughout the game. I'm going to be bringing in two Mustangs to take on his ME109. This pretty much wins the air war. So, yeah, air war pretty much won by that. Two Mustangs. I had them on sort of cool, waiting for him to use his own air force, and it paid off, so that was quite nice. Shaft shoots are though, still doing a lot of damage on the ground. And in general, even if the uh, like other player, Doberman here, had been uh, covering his left flank, or his right flank, if we look at it from his point of view, this is his right flank, if he was covering that, then... I think this would have been obviously a much closer game, but we still would have had a lead because you can see we're pushing on the far side of the town, we're pushing up on this right side, and yeah, I'm being hit by like constant off-map artillery now, but it's not too much of an issue. I've kind of got used to like the whole off-map thing now. I used to get kind of, kind of salty about it, it used to really annoy me, and I think it still needs nerfing, but it's just, I've got used to it, and I don't really care anymore. <laughs> By the way, my Mustang's coming in to take on the Sharpshooter. My position's still strong here, so again, not particularly worried. He can continue to try and push towards me, but these airborne rifles are being very resilient. In the town, I do have these airborne rifles using Zooka after Zooka to take on multiple half-tracks, take out the Panzer II there. This airborne engineer somehow was still alive. Going to be using a Thunderbolt there to take out that shaft shoots the squad. But yeah, my couple of airborne rifle reinforcements really doing a good job. My Locust unfortunately died. But uh, after that, well, Kirk is going to surrender. And that basically means that the Fulshamjäger player is now an AI. Now, the weird thing was that after Kirk surrendered, 
Doberman didn't surrender. And this was the telling point of the game where I realized that, hey, these guys aren't even, you know, on the same team. Because generally when one person surrenders, the other person surrenders if they're, you know, working together, right? Because there's no point in one person leaving and the other person not. Unless, the, unless one person's just incredibly stubborn. So this made us realize that actually what, what ended up happening in this game was Do Doberman really dropped the ball on this flank. And, well, Kirk Lazarus, he, he really did a good job, you know, he was he was definitely, you know, pushing me quite hard. And it was just a, it was just a shame, in my opinion, that his game was spoiled by the fact that his teammate couldn't hold the flank because they weren't a team. Or maybe they were, and I'm, I'm getting it completely wrong, but in my opinion, that's how it, it looked to me. And I think that's something that's really disappointing in the ranked sort of scene at the moment. Like a 2v2 should be competitive, it's a bit of like a ranked 2v2 and if you're being matched up with players who aren't necessarily on the same level or um, basically aren't on communications with you when other people are, that's not fair, that's not fair in my opinion at all. So it was a really good fight against Kirk on this right flank. But I, as you can see, as soon as he becomes AI, it's, it's not hard for me to try and push through here. And I'm just making a lot of ground. We're on a plus three, 74% territory lead. And we're going to see pretty much Doberman fight till the very end. So the airborne rifles in the town, these guys have used up all of their bazookas, this squad. This guy, this one only has three Zooka shots left. So multiple half tracks have been moving in. Two line of sight of these airborne rifles and being taken out. Miles just slowly moving from left to right now with his uh, ram and rifle combo. One of his rams does get bailed out by a Panzer IV. But still, as you can see, there's not too much uh, left on the map. The AIs swarming their units together and allowing me to make a lot of ground here. Managing to push up the pathfinders. I've got an airborne engineers on the right side to flame any units that come through the, the tree line. I'm dropping off a 50 cal into this building and that's just going to make things even harder. And uh, this unit's actually just uh, moving up to try and make this 40 mega surrender but since they're going to be hitting me from across the, the road there, I'm just going to get the engineers into cover as soon as I can. Bringing up a Bofors as well, that's just to help uh, the supporting fire and I'm actually opening up onto the uh, Schwimmwagen there and that's going to get taken out by the 50 cal as well, so yeah. Can't help but think that like if this was a player this wouldn't have happened, you know, like there was no way that he would have just conceded this tree line. But either way, it happens, plus four, 77% territory lead. A ranked game that just didn't really feel as rewarding as it should have as soon as we realized that our opponents probably weren't working together throughout this game and it's quite a shame because I really do enjoy playing ranked games and some of them are, are really really close and I've shown you guys games before where they've been like 40 minute slogs where they come down to a draw and that's just like the best feeling ever like those games are so intense like so exciting this game it was fun on my right side because Kirk played really well but on that left flank, when you just like know that, you know, there's nothing, you, you don't have to worry about an entire side of the map. It's it's silly. It's just silly. So that's just basically what I wanted to bring up throughout this game. Um, I've been struggling to get like decent gameplay lately, and um, again, that's a shame as well. But I'm since I'm going to be extremely busy and I'm away for a long time. I just. Um, wanted to leave it at that. So either way, um, I'm not sure entirely why it says end of the replay and it hasn't come up with an end screen, but I'm pretty sure this replay was bugged. So I'm not going to be able to go to the end screen, I'm just going to have to leave it here. Um, but pretty much everything I wanted to say has been said and I don't think that kill death really matters too much when we won that game so convincingly. So either way, hopefully you enjoyed this one. Um, sorry if it was a bit of a bitch and moan. Um, but hopefully the you know fight against the Folkshimiega player as 101st was quite exciting to watch. I, I thought it was actually quite fun throughout the game. It was just a shame that the game in general was spoiled by them not being able to work together properly. 
But either way, thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.